Welcome to the Contreras Report International Edition. I am Raul Lowry Contreras, and this is our report for the day. Today, I have some good news. Azerbaijan, located at the Caspian Sea, is a major oil and natural gas producer. It has been since oil was first pumped commercially from the ground in the 19th century. As it happens, when it declared independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, it took control of the Soviet oil industry based in Azerbaijan and geographically dealt with the other countries involved in and around the Caspian Sea. Negotiations have been ongoing since 1992 on exactly what parts of the sea belong to which country and what oil and gas producing areas belong to which country as well. During the last fall's 44-day war with Armenia, Azerbaijan liberated its long-occupied areas and won the war. And a sample of what happens when one country is negotiating with a winner, like Azerbaijan, a few days ago, the governments of Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan announced that after 30 years of negotiations, the two countries have decided to jointly develop a huge oil field in the middle of the Caspian Sea. Yes, you heard right. They negotiated for 30 years and finally made an agreement 70 days after Azerbaijan won the war. This agreement could pave the way for the transit of Turkmenistan's massive gas reserves to Europe. This agreement is over the Dostluk oil field. Dostluk means friendship in both the Azerbaijani and Turkmen languages. Dostluk is not particularly significant, but Azerbaijan State Oil Company, Sokar, has suggested it is comparable to the Karabakh field. It is already drilling, which is expected to produce around 21 million tons of crude oil and around 13 billion, that's a billion with a B, cubic meters of gas. But it won't be a game changer. Far more significant is the political agreement, which marks an important first step towards further agreements, which could change the regional energy picture and help Turkmenistan's gas finally reach Europe. That's important. More specifically, joint development of Dostruk would require further close cooperation to develop the infrastructure necessary to get oil and gas from the field to export markets, infrastructure which could be used to export oil and gas from other Turkmen fields as well. Development of Dostruk should give Turkmenistan a modest new revenue stream, but more importantly, it also opens up the prospect of a direct gas connection between the two countries, which would prove more lucrative and have far-reaching significance. Turkmenistan has the fourth largest reserves of natural gas in the entire world. An estimated 19.5 trillion cubic meters, nearly 10% of the world's total. That's in that one country, right next to Azerbaijan. They, well, across the sea from Azerbaijan. They include Galkinish gas field, with 2.8 trillion cubic meters of recoverable reserves alone, making it the second largest gas field in the world. With such an abundance, Turkmenistan could be rivaling the world's biggest gas exporters like Russia, Qatar, and Norway. Instead, landlocked in Central Asia, it has until now had only limited opportunities for monetizing the natural gas with 90% of it going to China, and no opportunity to export it to lucrative European markets. A pipeline to carry Turkmenistan's gas across the Caspian Sea to Azerbaijan and onward to Turkey and Europe was planned in the late 1990s, sponsored by a consortium of Shell, Bechtel, and General Electric. But that project collapsed following the discovery of Azerbaijan's huge Shah Deniz gas field after which it became more expedient for Baku to develop and export its own reserves rather than another country's. The agreement is, quote, huge news indeed, 
It's a last obstacle to a fully fledged shore to shore trans Caspian natural gas pipeline. And any opposition to it disappears. So says the energy security program of the NATO Association of Canada. If constructed, a Trans-Caspian gas pipeline would find the already operating transit route to Europe called the, quote, Southern Gas Corridor, unquote, the EU-backed transit route of the pipelines, which have been supplying Azerbaijani gas to Turkey since mid-2018, uh, and which on December 31 began supplying Azerbaijani gas to Greece, Bulgaria and Italy. The pipelines will deliver 16 billion cubic meters of gas per year. Of this volume, Turkey will get six of those billion cubic meters, and Europe will get 10 of those billion cubic meters, BCMs. Of those 10 BCMs, eight BCMs will be exported to Italy while two BCMs will be exported equally to Greece and Bulgaria and the rest of the surrounding markets. Is this important? The two main pipelines which make up the corridor, the TANAP, TANAP pipeline through Turkey and the Trans-Adriatic pipeline across Greece, Albania and the Adriatic Sea to Italy currently operate at only half capacity and the full route could easily be expanded to carry gas from Turkmenistan. But making Turkmenistan's gas available for exports is only half the story, and questions remain about European demand. Expansion of the pipeline would happen only if gas were available at one end of the pipeline and a market for the gas existed at the other, supply and demand. For now, Europe enjoys access to more gas than it needs. 40% of it is supplied by Russia, which has itself been aggressively developing new Europe-bound pipelines in an effort to discourage potential rival suppliers and secure its position as the continent's dominant provider. In the face of such competition, the future of any Turkmenistan gas exports to Europe is likely to lie in Brussels. The, the extent to which the European Union, the EU, is prepared to push the development of a trans-Caspian gas pipeline and wean itself off its dependence on Russia. So now Europe has the real ability to diversify its energy imports. Azerbaijan and its allies and partners are in business to make money for their people. Entering Europe through the Balkan states brings free enterprise into the European market, first with the Azerbaijani gas and next, perhaps, with gas from the fourth largest natural gas reserves in the world, in Azerbaijan's new friend, Turkmenistan. It pays to be a winner. There you have it. the good news of market economics, supply and demand, and new competition for Russian gas companies that have been used by Russia for foreign policy effectiveness for the government of Russia. To hell with private companies. It has set out to grow monopolies of energy so it can blackmail European our European friends like they did with Ukraine 10 years ago. We thank you for being there. I'm Raul Lowry Contreras. This is the Contreras Report International Edition. If you'd like to contact me, the address will be on the screen in a few seconds. If you want to receive notice when my reports are posted, subscribe at YouTube or Facebook. Subscribe and you'll be notified. Again, thank you. I'm Raul Lowry Contreras and we'll see you soon.